Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I just want to go over something really quickly and it's about the new announcement from the World Health Organization that they're going to include gaming disorder as one of the new mental health illnesses. As a gamer myself, who's also in medical school, I just wanted to offer my input because when I first heard it, I was concerned and then I did some research and so here I'm gonna do some teaching. So here we go. So this announcement comes at a very specific time. If you didn't know, this past week was E3, which is the Electronic Entertainment Expo. It's the biggest gaming event of the year. We had a whole bunch of games announced and it was huge. You probably saw it trending on Twitter or on YouTube and adults go and like they're, they pay for tickets and they have a really good time. Yes, I do believe that there ought to be help for children and anyone who's struggling with gaming. But the reason that I was a little bit concerned when I first heard about gaming disorder is because there is a clear stigma from adults and from the medical community about gaming in general. An example of stigma from the medical community, in one of my medical resources, I was learning about regression. It's a defense mechanism in psychiatry when an adult starts doing childish behavior because they can't handle the, sur the world's surroundings. The example that they gave was, quote, when an adult plays video games. And when I read that, I thought, well, this is unfortunate because there are a ton of adults who play video games. And the other thing that I thought was, this was probably written by some mom or dad who was just frustrated with their kids playing video games and the older generation's like, ah, oh, that darn video Fortnite thing. So that's, that's my concern with the stigma because it exists already. I'm wondering if this diagnosis came about from a bunch of frustrated moms and dads who sit on the psychiatric council and they're just like, oh, we should make Fortnite a disease. Well, you can't really call Fortnite a disease. All right, we'll call it gaming disorder. Articles that I read discussing the gaming disorder cited children who spend 20 hours per week playing video games. Think about it. 20 hours a week is about three hours a day. That's called a hobby. Three hours a day in athletics, musical theater, spend it at the gym. You know, you can spend that time watching TV or movies. But then some people would argue, those things are healthy for you. Really, did you, I just said watching TV. Oh no, 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 I meant uh, that they're social for you. Watching TV doesn't have to be social. And yeah, I do recognize the benefits of sports activities, musical theater, but gaming, you get to live someone else's life. It has a lot of benefits teach you problem solving, analytical skills, learning how to spend money because you have in-game currency, you get to live in new worlds, and it's a good disconnect from your life if you're not having the best of times. And on top of that, you get agility with your fingers that enhances hand-eye coordination. One of the reasons I wanted to become a doctor is because when I was younger, they said that children who played video games had better hand-eye coordination and be could become better surgeons. And I was like, I play video games a lot, and I have really good hand-eye coordination. Gaming is also the highest form of interactive entertainment, second only to acting. In acting, you really get to be that person. Imagine if you could be in Game of Thrones. Would you not want to spend every second exploring every mountain, flying every dragon? That's a world that you want to take part in. And when you watch these movies, you want that sense of immersion and you go to amusement parks to get more of that. But imagine if you could get that through gaming. And now with the advancement of virtual reality, we're a step away from actually doing that. So I don't understand why it's such a, a badgered field. It, it's fun. I appreciate the gaming and it's a good pastime. It's not like I was invited to go outside to go hang out with friends. Everyone was busy. So instead of me just sitting at home, eating, getting drunk, shooting up drugs, like I was having fun playing a video game where I could save the world. How is that a bad thing? How is that different from people who spend hours watching Netflix? Netflix is designed in a way so that you could binge it. Why is it that gaming, when you're actually contributing to the entertainment by being immersed and having to use your brain to play, that's seen as worse? And plus it's the most lucrative. And plus it gives people an escape from life that you can't get in other ways. And it it's a fantasy, it gives people such pleasure. Considering how interactive and immersive and entertaining gaming can be, gaming is the largest entertainment industry that exists. I'm gonna provide some numbers right now. I found them online. I'll admit I couldn't find any specific source. So if you find anything else, please put it down in the comments. This is what I found. The music industry in 2016 brought in $16 billion. The movie industry brought in $38.6 billion. The gaming industry brought in $64 billion dollars plus an extra 40 billion from mobile games altogether 104 billion dollars that's crazy that's huge i don't understand why people put down this industry so much it's like oh it's for kids and it's that mario stuff and it's like people who don't know how to cope with life you like music you like 
movies, this is just another form of entertainment, and it is the highest form of entertainment because you're living out the movie that you love. That's huge! Now, I actually went online, did a bunch of research, and I pulled up how to diagnose it. Here's what I found. All of my sources will be in the prescription box below. Get it? Prescription. Medicine. Gaming disorder is characterized by a pattern of persistent or recurrent gaming behavior, which may be online or offline, manifested by 1. Impaired control over gaming 2. Increasing priority given to gaming to the extent that gaming proceeds over other life interests and three, and I specified and, we'll come back to that. Continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. To result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. The gaming behavior and other features are normally evident over a period of at least 12 months in order for a diagnosis to be assigned. When I read that, I could not tell you the sigh of relief that I had. I like it. I appreciate how concise and how direct it is. Objectively speaking, I think any gamer who hears this would think, yeah, anyone who has that and can't control like if they need to pee and pees on themselves while playing or doesn't eat food because they're playing so much, that person should seek help. It's not like a bad thing, it's you should seek help because you're not living life to the fullest. I don't think most gamers are like that and that's why I think it's important to read this so that you know to not stigmatize gamers. It's not like gaming is a mental illness. The CNN article phrased it so poorly, they were like, Oh, now they said that gaming disorder is a mental illness. Psh! Even how they discussed it was pretty disgusting. <laughs> nice. The thing is not to just label someone as having the disorder, it's to offer them an avenue to get therapy. Final consensus. I also watched this on PewDiePie. He released a video where he talked about gaming disorder. I wrote in one of his comments that as a medical student, I'm concerned because of this, 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 and other people also commented. So there is a concern from the gaming community that we're not ill, most of us. There are people who could let this go too far, but that could happen in any field. You could have someone who binges movies. You could have someone who binges anything to the point where they're harming themselves. I don't know how many people do suffer, and so I don't know if it needs to be classified as gaming disorder or just like an addictive disorder. Like you don't know how to regulate what you're taking in. That's what made me want to make this video because I was like, well, I have an insight into the gaming and I actually want to see what they're diagnosing because I don't think I have a disorder playing video games. and I don't think most people do. It's just another form of entertainment. So yeah, I hope that helped. I hope that that was informational for you as a gamer, or as a regular person, or as a parent. And if you have any questions, just put them down below. I respond to every single comment. Consider subscribing for more. Consider liking for less. <laughs> and as always, be safe, be strong, be swag. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one. Next one, next one, next one. Bye! And there's another article here that's saying in 2017, 19,000 gamers completed a survey about symptoms of gaming disorder. More than 65% did not report any symptoms of gaming disorder, and only 2.4% of the sample endorsed at least five of the symptoms needed to be diagnosed. So if only 2% of the population has this. Is it worth having the diagnosis? European Games Developer Federation criticized this. The Society for Media, Psychology, and Technology also criticized this disorder. So even though the World Health Organization just went out and just blanket statement did this, there are a lot of people who are still not comfortable with having this diagnosis because it's not fully fleshed out yet. And if you don't have something that's fully fleshed out, quote, it may ultimately cause more harm than good. And that's exactly the concern. Yeah, and this is the line that I think sums it up perfectly. They also asked why the DSM-5, which is just the psychiatric manual of diagnoses, they also asked why the DSM-5 singled out gaming disorder as a proposed category, but not other things that could be addictive, including working, exercising, or eating. There we go. That's that's the hit right there. Why are you singling out gaming as the problem when all these other things could be addictive? And when you already did a study and only 2% of people showed these random symptoms, look at what they're asking for. So that was one diagnosis that I saw from the World Health Organization, but the American Psychological Association is asking to put this into the DSM, and they're saying that these are the symptoms. Heavy focus on internet gaming. Withdrawal symptoms when internet gaming is taken. Why is it internet gaming? It should just be video gaming. You could play offline. So is it just if I play online that it's a disorder? Come on, like this is so poorly written. Some people don't play on the internet. <sighs>
not being able to play less. What? These are such ambiguous criteria. This is just more like, oh yeah, continues to play despite problems. The World Health Organization diagnosis was much more clear and specific with its destruction on the person. So I really like the World Health Organization. <laughs> And as always, yo, I should go to the gym. Nah, video games. Just kidding, I'm gonna go to the gym. Gosh. Calm down, Cynthia. I just imagine that the person who runs the psychiatric cat soul is named Cynthia because she's frustrated that her kids play Fortnite. <laughs>